Jerry is in Vancouver. Hi, Jerry. Welcome to the Ontario Leadership Podcast. Hey, Dave. Can you hear me? All good? Yeah, absolutely. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Uh, first off, I've been binge watching your <laughs> content for the last little bit here, and uh, not going to lie, my heart's a bit pumped up right now, and I'm, I'm glad to be on the show. <laughs> oh, we're glad to have you, sir. How can we help? So, uh, yeah, my name is Jerry. I'm actually from Vancouver up in Canada, in BC, Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I run a automotive type business. It's uh, a bit of a niche market for automotive. We're a small shop that works on four by fours in, in general, like your, you know, Toyota Comas, four runners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we were fourth year in. Uh, revenue last year just crested uh, 1.15 mil Canadian. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, a little bit less down there, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like we're in a great position, but as of lately, we've been, uh, to put it short, we've been having some growing pains, uh, staff morale has kind of been down and it, it's kind of taking a toll on myself personally. I I'm the only owner here. So I work with a general manager, uh, five other employees. And actually, uh, since the time I, I reached out and, uh, we were going to do the show here, the, I had one of my staff hand in his two weeks. So I kind of. We've been we've been working to um, get someone else uh, back in the shop and help them out and go from there. But yeah, it's just, so what uh, is it, what is a growing a pain? What happened? Well, I mean the we we're at a point where I feel like the the revenue we're able to pretty much double from the, the previous fiscal year, which was amazing. Um, but the expenses have been creeping up, and I've I've noticed that it's every time there's a, a an issue like one staff member kind of brings up because we're such a small team. Um, every, you know, 10 steps forward, we take 11 back. I feel like. Like what? What are you talking about? So uh, give you an example is uh, we have the, the technician just recently left us um, since it's fresh in my mind. He, you know, he, he they're, they're all pretty close. Uh, the three of them in the back. Uh, and then the, one of the service advisors in the front. And I believe just, you know, the, the reason that the employee that's leaving has given me it kind of everyone else, you know, takes that kind of attitude and um, it just brings everybody down. And, takes and what I kind of attitude? Affecting. What are you talking about? Yeah. So he, he's kind of giving the, he, he's given me the reasons of, he doesn't like how the business is run. Um, I guess part of, do, do, part of it's due to me and then, the other part is every time they feel like they're close to hitting profits, um, which we're we are very close. Um, we just seem to have something else. So you made a million and dollars revenue and you didn't make a profit? Uh, not on the books, and I'm well, books count. I mean, that's where the profits yeah. measured. Yeah, and so we, did you make a profit of, or not? No, we didn't. We we took a loss. Why? I've narrowed it down to mainly the la amount of labor hours billed out versus the, the time spent on the jobs. So you suck and at we, estimating. In a way, and because we're in a, we work on a lot of custom, uh, you know, custom work. Um, so you give a fixed price and then you, then you d mm -hmm. double the hours of what it should have been. So you suck at estimating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd say I, I would assume that. <laughs> or, or you but, need to change uh, yeah. your pricing model where you get charged, get, you know, we think it's going to be 10 hours and yeah. hey, you know, you get five hours into it and you go back to the customer and go, it's not going to be 10 hours. It's going to be 20. Yeah. 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 So like it's, it's comes down to, I would say every quarter we're, we're doing better and better, but yeah, every time we kind of make a breakthrough, something happens either with, again, the uh, staff feeling discouraged and, and whatnot. Well, them feeling I, discouraged doesn't keep you from making yeah. a profit. No, uh, it shouldn't. No, no, they'll be discouraged when you don't make a profit because they don't I, think they're going to get to keep it, their it, job. Yeah. I think it affects me more personally than perhaps, and maybe at times they, they see that. So, Okay, so I hear yeah. two problems that you're facing. One is you're not profitable, and two is the staff morale is down, and the two are tied together. The profit is not down because the morale is down. The morale is down because the profit's down. Agreed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so really what I – if I'm you, I'm going to get involved and start – figuring out my pricing model mm -hmm. and make this stinking thing profitable. You make way too much money and do way too much work to not make a profit. Yeah. I, I mean, agree. if you're bringing in a hundred thousand bucks and you hadn't figured it out yet, that's different, but you're bringing in a million dollars. Yeah. It should be something left over at the end of the day. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. That's a lot of work. 
I mean, it's dog. It's a, but it's a dog chasing its tail. You still ain't caught anything, you know. Yeah. So right now it's a dead gum expensive four wheel hobby. Yeah. So um, and these guys they can feel that and they don't, you know they they want to be a part of something that's winning and and that's profitable. So uh, how do you do your pricing? So you're doing custom work on four by four. So you're creating uh, something to do rock climbing or monster trucking or whatever, right? Yeah. So there's there's definitely I would say different categories. We also do an online store, which is about a third of the revenue. And the is are you making uh, a profit on that? I would say so. It's definitely. I don't say so. You need to know, man. You're yeah. running it. It's about 15 to 20 points on average for gross profit for okay. the online store. All right. So it's not too much. If How I'm much overhead honest, is associated with it that eats that 15% I mean, up? We, well, I mean, we carry about 400 in inventory at any given time right now. That's inventory. That's not overhead. Yeah. Um, so usually. Yeah, we'd buy it in at like 30 points if we can. That's kind of the ideal yeah. one I aim for. Okay, so you're probably making some money on that. Yes, but it's not a, a ton. Definitely subsidizing the shop. The the greatest. Um, okay, the greatest so why cost, is the shop not making yeah. money? You can tell me. You know. Last six months, we only charged out about five and a half hours on average per day between two technicians. Well, like well, one one. It's not getting one, work. Uh, apprentice. I don't think it's the lack of work. Because sometimes, I mean, most of the time, I feel like the shop is is slammed. But when I look at the numbers at the end of the day, we're just, the hours aren't there. So okay, they're in there things. working eight hours, yeah. but they're not billing them? I want to say sometimes it's, I see jobs getting dragged on. And I don't want to make assumptions. I, I still... Yeah, I do. I, I I'm making like a million the, dollars and losing money. So I'm about to make some assumptions. Okay. I'm about yeah. to make somebody's assumption go in the street. You, mm -hmm. you and your assumption get to leave because I'm about done. Um, yeah. you know, this is, this is, I, I got a real short temperament for things that don't work. We got to fix them. And yeah. so, and if I'm you, that's what I want you to take on. And if you're become a man of action, a man on a mission, your, uh, morale issue that you personally are facing will go away because convert your, uh, your, your fear and your disgust to a healthy, righteous anger, not at people, but at this broken dadgum mess. And we got to fix this mess. And if that means two of the guys leave, that's fine. They need to leave. Because if you're working for me and you're dragging a job out and I build the job and the reason we're not profitable is you're taking twice as long because you're sitting on your thumb, then you don't get to work here anymore. No. That's a simple equation. Yeah, that's business, right? Yeah, it's, no. you're, we're managing a project, okay? So how are these guys paid? Are they paid by the hour? Uh, salary on the full, uh, the full time. I have one part timer, so everyone else is on salary. The apprentice is on hourly, eight hours a day. Um, there's so a, paid a lot of techs in, in now. You know, you got a, a service rider in a standard car, not a custom deal, but you got a service yeah. rider, and, and it's already pre-programmed in the computer. This is a three point two five hour job, and that's mm -hmm. what they get paid for. And if they take four hours, they only get paid for three point two five. You know how that works in right. a regular shop, yeah. right? Yeah, so we are not flat rate here, yeah. The the, the techs are they're on a, a fixed salary. Um, yeah, I know. And we were going to roll out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering why they... I, I mean, it, it's probably harder to do it than it is in a standard service rider because you mm -hmm. you guys, it's not as easy to say, okay, this is a three-hour job. It might be a yeah. four-hour job, but um, you might want to say, you're, you, you know, you and me... Tech and me are going to sit with a customer. We're going to say, we're going to do these five things and we're going to charge X. And here's what you're going to get paid for this job. Right. And, and do it by the job and let them be involved in setting the estimate, setting the price with the customer. And then the tech is going to make X and you're going to make Y. And the customer okay. knows ahead of time what it is. And, and then, by God, it's not going to take eight hours to do a five-hour job. It's going to take four hours to do a five-hour job because the dude wants to move on to the next job because he's getting paid by piecework. Yeah. But he helps set his own poison on that. I mean, I'm not going to make him choke that down. Now, in a service rider situation, you know, you're working a General Motors or a Ford shop. They know exactly how long it's going to take because they've done eight million of those things, Okay. But in this, we're making this up. So you and the guy, the guy's got to have input if you're going to put him on this. 
But I'm gonna I'm gonna change the comp plan to piecework for one thing, and and get them and let them have a say in the pricing then. And um and listen, and if you're a tech and you want to bitch about how I'm running the business, you do need to leave. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm glad that guy left. I know he, I know there's work not getting done because he's not there, but you also don't have the the acid and the toxicity of his gossipy mouth in the shop. Yeah, no, I I definitely you hit that nail actually. <laughs> yeah, if every time you turn your back, they're running you down. Well, no wonder nobody likes anybody in there. Yeah, and that that's a standard thing. We call that gossip here. We have a one of our core values at Ramsey is is that you hand your negatives up. You come in my office and sit down, or one of the leaders' offices sit down. You don't hand your negatives down. If you hand your negatives down, that's called gossip, and I will warn you one time. And after that, you get to work somewhere else. It is a no gossip policy. That's what we do. And you know what? People don't talk about other people here unless they're in a leader's office and saying there's a problem with so and so. But we don't run each other down behind everybody's back, and then everybody doesn't have to be looking over their shoulder. And there's all this negative because sometimes an automotive shop is worse than a beauty parlor. A bunch of old men sitting around gossiping makes these women look like saints. And so. You know, uh, you know, you got to you got to bust up into that and go. You 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 turkeys, we're not doing this. We're a team, and we're creating these cool cars together, and we're doing this cool work together, and we're going to be on the same team together, or you're not going to be here because this is the kind of thing we're going to run. So I'm going to get real proactive on dealing with that and setting that standard in the office and on the floor. And I, th and, and I don't know exactly, Jerry, if my idea will work on piecework here, but, but something's got to happen where you have your finger more on the pulse and have more of an expectation, a demand, reasonably, without being a jerk about it, to get your work done on time because you're screwing up our profitability on these jobs when it takes eight hours to do a five-hour job or we're getting paid for five and it's taking you eight. That ain't cool. You know, if you're here working eight hours and only got five and a half hours billing, there's a problem. There's no way you can make a profit. That's a 30%, 40% problem. So, yeah, you can't, you can't sell enough stuff out of your store to offset that crap. And that's what's happening to you. So you, the way, the operational way you're billing and paying and estimating and pricing all tied together is where you're at. That's the core issue. And if you'll get down in there and figure that out, you're going to solve this problem and then just keep firing people until you get the right people in there that aren't going to run their dadgum mouth. And I don't mean that in a mean way. I mean, we're going to, firing is going to continue until morale improves. That's not what we're talking about here. But we are saying, you know, you can't work here if you're not going to be a positive influence on everyone. If you've got a frustration, you've got a problem, you bring it in my office. You don't sit in the coffee room, stand around the coffee mug, leaning up against the office space, up against the cubicle, telling everybody what's wrong with me. We're not doing that, and me pay you. That ain't how this deal works. So, and I don't know why, where we got to in our culture, we think we have to put up with that crap. Because um, you don't. You own the thing. This is the Entree Leadership Podcast.